as long as you are experiencing this incarnation, you're attached to that field, but you can have enough of a shift in focus, a shift in awareness, that you temporarily set that awareness aside and it may feel like you're outside of it, but you're always connected. It's always being breathed by you while you're having adventures in consciousness. Well, the heart has the is the greatest radiator of the body as far as an energy field. It's, its energy field is the largest. The head is what keeps us feeling separate. So you want unity, you go to the heart, and that's where you can really feel our connection with each other. So it's just so important to get out of the head into the heart. Mediumship is actually the sidebar to my work. My bigger motive is to live what I call the awakened way. And it's realizing you are not only human, you're part of one big web connecting everything and that's when the synchronicities start showing up in your life you can't deny that and that the creative healing force of the universe is love you come to know this by all right Suzanne Giesman, welcome on the podcast. What are you most excited about right now in your life? I'm just excited about the opportunity to bring more and more people into the awareness of who we really are and not, not be stuck in human only mode. So mm -hmm. thanks for that opportunity, Amelia. Human only mode. I love that because we're going to get into the soul, the spirit, we're going to get into the unseen realms. But before that, I really wanted to start off talking about not necessarily the wolf's message, because we'll get into that a bit later. But I wanted to talk about how right now we're entering a time where we're, we're no longer in the lone wolf mentality, where we're seeing people around us um, bringing each other closer into collaboration, into how can we understand that we're all connected how we can understand that you know there is no separation that lone wolf mentality is no longer appropriate in these times in humanity and you said that we're on the verge of a massive shift in consciousness that will change how we relate to each other and how we feel inside so i think it's important to just drop in for people truly what what is going on in the world right now um from your bird's eye view i know you you saw the destruction of the twin towers from a bird's eye point of view but if you were to look at the state of humanity right now from a bird's eye point of view what would you what would you say for that i would i see and my guides just put this image in my mind a great big shaker we're being shaken up and it's not comfortable and it causes us to say what's up with this and out of chaos comes change and growth Absolutely growth and everybody's personal life. You can look back at something in your life and what was, what was that all about? I don't want this. And yet now you're stronger for it. And so we have a lot of tumult, but that's not new. Mm. I found a book the other day and I was opening it up to the beginning and it said, you know, these are really tumultuous times. Everything's in chaos. People are at each other's throats. And then this little voice said, look at the copyright. So I went back and it was written in 1948. Yeah. So this is life. We come here for the ups and downs, the bumpy roads, and they lead to growth. But it's so much better when we realize this together. And that lone wolf comment you made is so true. I just had a conversation with a friend on my podcast yesterday, and everything changes when we stop focusing inward, me, 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 and start looking at others as us and we. And I like how that rhymes. Yeah. And we we realize we're not so alone. We really are all in this together. And that's what more and more people are coming to see because literally the planets are aligning and there's an energetic factor to that. And we're very blessed to be born now, experiencing this human experience now by mm. choice at the soul level mm. and part of this change. Yeah. and And I've seen how like tuning into where where is the consciousness of humanity right now because at certain points it depends how open we are to certain types of information and really tuning into those younger generations i've heard you guys speak upon as well in other panels with bruce grayson with Evan alexander how the young generations are essentially wired in a different way uh more open to to talking about 
mediumship, the afterlife, uh, near-death experiences, spirit realm. Um, I wanted to ask you why you believe that's the case right now. Why are younger generations more open? It's very clear. It's from the exchange of information that's available now. It's You can find anything. And if before we had the internet, you grew up with parents and family who were very traditional. They wouldn't talk about mediumship. But now you can go online, you can watch videos of people who have crossed the veil and come back to talk about it, near-death experiences. Mm -hmm. You can watch mediums, really good, credible mediums doing their work online. And you just come to the conclusion for yourself, there's something to this. The soul mm -hmm. knows it. We just have to get through the human layers of thinking and belief systems and clear that out and just know what the soul already knows. So the technology is a real boon in that regard. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about past lives, we usually tend to think about, oh, like I was an Egyptian, whatever, in, in this life or whatever. But we also have had many past lives in this life. And just tuning into your past life as, as a commander in the Navy, um, oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> as <clears throat> aide to the chairman of, of the Joint Chief of Staff, which is basically the head of the U.S. military, huge responsibility. You are, in that sense, very structured, very, you know, on time, rigid, like very in that type of mentality of its discipline. Um, not much room for the woo-woo stuff as, as we've heard. Um, this, this spiritual uh, world being labeled as woo-woo sometimes. I think more and more less, but just to get to the point of you've had this past life of a sergeant, you know, and commander in, you know, in this, in this realm. And what was it like for you to switch up that mentality and get into what you're doing now and helping people take the fear off of death and connect with their loved ones that have I passed? I feel the biggest shift was that getting the focus off of yourself into others. In the military, you're trained to immediately take in somebody by how what they're wearing on their uniform, size them up, and judge your relationship to them. I had three stripes on my shoulder as a Navy commander, and you know I had this insignia here. And every time you meet someone, that's the first thing. Do I salute them or do they salute me? Where are we in the pecking order? So you're always separate mm. and you're always either inferior or superior. Oh, maybe that person is the same rank. I can relax for a few minutes. It's an amazing way to spend a couple decades of your life to undo that aspect, not to mention the rigidity and uniformity that you were talking about is a huge undertaking. But once you start touching the more spacious aspects of yourself, getting to know it, spending time as a soul in awareness and in meditation, and then trying to carry that throughout your day, finding that balance is a beautiful thing because we don't want to undo all of our left brain yeah. aspects. There's a lot of good there. It's yeah. nice to be organized and, and disciplined, especially when it comes to the spiritual path to meditate every day. So finding the balance has been the key and changed my life in such beautiful ways that I love to share with other people how to find that peace and definitely joy. Yeah, And I'm loving this word right now, which is synchronicity. Uh, I feel that your life has been packed, filled with synchronicities um, in the last couple of two years for me as well. Everything I've, I've kind of connected it to, oh, that's a synchronicity uh, and being open to that frequency of synchronicity is what brings it into our life. Um, but I wanted to bring up one synchronicity uh, for you, which is your stepdaughter, Susan. She was struck by lightning and she passed to the other side. And at that point, you know, you were on a boat going across the Atlantic Ocean um, with your husband, Ty, and you guys received this email from from your, your other stepdaughter saying, hey, this this event happened and you guys had to, you know, basically from Greece to go all the way to the United States to go to her funeral. But in that boat trip, you were reading a book about the afterlife. What do you think was, why do you think spirit was drawing you to that aspect before this experience happened with Susan? There's just no doubt that we're part of one big web. It, yeah. There's a greater plan at work always through all of us. That book snagged me so clearly when we stopped at a Navy base, US Navy base in Italy. It was like 
fill a bag with books for two dollars and oh what's this one it's by mm. the medium james van prague and i started reading it weeks later it was just still in the paper bag oh i'll read this one now and it planted a seed in my mind of what's possible yeah. so that after susan passed huh that came to mind, and I thought, I wonder if I could have a reading with the medium, having no idea I would one day be working as a medium myself. It, it just all unfolded beautifully. That book was meant to come into my hands. But what's so funny, Emilio, is that it it said thing, things in there that were outrageous to me about what happens on the other side. I threw it out before my husband would see I was reading it. If he picked it up, he would have thought I was crazy. <laughs> What struck a chord in you in that book that, that was opening you up to new ways of thinking? Well, it wasn't that it struck a chord. It opened that childlike sense of wonder. Wouldn't it be awesome if this were true? Yeah. Wouldn't it be awesome if these people really could talk to our loved ones who have passed? Yes. So then when I saw Susan's body in the coffin, suddenly I knew the spirit has to be real because this is just a vessel I'm looking at. She's not there. So yeah. where is she? Yeah. yeah. I had a similar experience, obviously, maybe not to that depth, but um, during the pandemic, my dog of, of 12 years, she was right beside my dad uh, during a very stressful time um, for the family, for his, a lot of changes in his life. And our dog sat next to him for three months, just there with him. And she essentially absorbed a lot of that stress and, and developed a cancer. So we eventually had to put her down. And I remember we went to the veterinarian and when they injected um, this, this serum, whatever it is that, that takes the dog out, immediately I felt like something left the body. Oh, yes. And I was like, what was that? It was insane oh, like, yes. when, I, when I felt it because it, it felt so real, so palpable, of, like something left this body. And we are anima animated by this spirit. If you want to uh, clarify for people, what is this innate spirit energy that runs through our veins, runs through this physical it, body? It, it doesn't just run through your veins. Yeah. It is everything. It is mm. the energy information subtle force that's not so subtle because I've been told if if we were allowed to feel the full force of this energy that reads us, that animates us, the body would just dissolve. It couldn't handle it all. So that that was one particular field of energy that was your dog. I felt that exact same thing with two of my beautiful babies, fur babies, who, the moment they passed. I thought mm -hmm. I'd be sobbing. I was sobbing with joy because I felt them. And they, they both said to me, I'm free because huh. their bodies were so tired and hurting. And it's just this burst of joy Huh, I'm no longer in this body trapped here. And they whipped around me and then off they went. Both mm -hmm. of them, same experience. A little with enough difference that I knew I wasn't making up either one of them. It was incredible. And that's what it's like for humans. It's just like, oh, I'm no longer in this this costume I've been wearing. It's the spirit, the soul. Huh. Yeah. Have you tapped into that ability of leaving your own body uh, and feeling that sense of oneness and connectedness with, with everything? Oh, repeatedly, repeatedly. Mm -hmm. But let's not think of it as leaving the body because as long as you are experiencing this incarnation, you're attached to that field, but you can have enough of a shift in focus, a shift in awareness that you temporarily set that awareness aside and it may feel like you're outside of it, but you're always connected. It's always being breathed by you while you're having adventures in consciousness. Mm -hmm. I've also heard, I was really curious about, and I think there's a question that many people may ask is like, what do we go do when we pass on to the other side? And I just heard you speaking on like people, many souls will just do exactly what they're you know, love to do here in, in this realm, in this earth. Um, but there's levels to it. If you want to explain what are these levels of the afterlife? Yeah, my, my most popular video on YouTube is what our loved ones are doing in the afterlife. <laughs> and, and why I love that video is because it's filled with evidential stories that I get from those across the veil. Like, I don't know that somebody loved to play golf when they were here, but this one man told me I'm playing golf every day and standing firmly on two feet. Turns out from his wife, he was 
passionate about golf, but he had a leg amputated before he died and could not stand on wow. two feet. So that's wow. what I mean by evidence. That's that military part of me that insists you're going to talk to me. If you want me to sit here with you, you need to give me good evidence. Which, so, which the world needs right now because it's bridging the spirit and the science and the right? evidence. And we yeah, need that. so the different levels... I have a dear friend, Brenda, I, always, I go like this because she always stands over here for me in my awareness. She studied mediumship before she passed. She, she told me, she was my, one of my students. She said, we're going we're gonna to be teaching mediumship together. And I, I thought, well, that's a little bodacious of her to, to offer that. You're just studying and I've been teaching for a long time, but she was a teacher. Turns out she's now my mediumship guide helping me teach classes from across wow. the veil. The joke wow. was on both of us. But she did not necessarily have to go do things that she loved to do here. She she figured it out while she was here. We are both soul and human at the same time. So she went to the head of the class when she passed and became one of my guides. So there are different, different levels depending on how awake you are to your true nature before you pass. Doesn't mean you bypass all the fun stuff you can create instantaneously across the veil yeah but uh you get you know, there's always choice yeah to share a story that really touched me when i heard it from you is that you were able to connect with the spirit of, of wayne dyer and yeah. he told you that he was sitting at the feet of the masters and we're discussing spiritual truths and immediately when i heard that just like tingles throughout my body i feel like um i felt very connected with that with that mission, that life purpose of, of seeking out the truths, which I believe if people are sitting here right now listening or watching this is because you are a seeker in your own yeah. right. And the only reason that you got to this point of mastering your, your channeling and mastering the mediumship is because of that curiosity, that spiritual seeking well, of, yeah. of let me take the, the discipline that I had um, from my background in, in the Navy and apply that to developing myself spiritually and growing, my, evolving my soul. So I would love to get into that of when people, and I believe a lot of younger generations and, and many people on the planet right now are, are, are awakening and tapping into their psychic abilities. Um, what would you say to someone that wants to develop those and, and, and what is actually possible for yeah. people? We can all awaken instantly when you question reality and question who you are. You are a multidimensional being. Mostly we focus on the story of me, state your name, the Suzanne story, the Emilio story, whoever you are listening, put, put that after it, or there in a sentence with story. That is just one aspect of such a greater being who you are. And all of us have one shared being. And that's way beyond the story. So what is the part of you and me that never changes ever? The awareness, here I am. Without any story, you still are aware. You know you exist. So what? Well, the story is everything that gets added onto that. And that can either upset us or bring us pleasure. That's constantly changing. So what are people seeking? They're seeking peace. They're seeking freedom mm. from the suffering and the ups and downs of the story. Well, that peace is right here. You can stop seeking by simply dropping the story. What's left? Well, I am still here. Who is that I? With no modifiers after it, it's the same I in me and you and everyone else. This is source, and it's living through you and through me and having adventures and playing and growing through these bodies. So find the part in you that never changes by getting quiet and taking the focus off the story and what's left. It's not emptiness. It's not boring. It's this pure potential that just has to express itself, that just has to bubble up and be you going out and having fun and having pain and having all of it, knowing 
It cannot be hurt. It cannot be destroyed. It just is. Hmm. The seeking ends right there when you just drop the story. Dropping the, the dropping the story, dropping the labels, dropping that sense yeah. of who we are. Um, yeah. But see, I, right, you say that, and I feel everybody's fear. Ego does not want you to get rid of uh, it. It's yeah. Story, and you said, but who would I be without my story? You would be this pure being. If you can touch that for just seconds, there's peace. Yeah. So just hold on to that a little longer each time, and then you can find it when you're in the middle of drama. Is that is that the state of awareness that you're tapping into when you are tuning into someone's energy field, when you're channeling? What is that process like for you when you tap into someone's uh, past, uh, someone that passed away in their life, or when you're channeling Sanaya? Like, what is that state of awareness for you? Yes. How do you drop into that? It is that. I... I have to do it from the higher level or my ego sits here and says, what if I get this wrong? What if I don't get anything? What if they think I'm being silly? That's that's the story. And it will always be here while we're in a body. So you just set it aside and drop into that place that we train ourselves to access. Blank slate, pure being, which is fullness, not emptiness, it's love. Yeah. Love is a state of pure connection. So if I just go to this place with no story, because the story causes us to feel disconnected from each other, if I just be and know that I am innately connected to my client and all of their loved ones across the veil, we meet in that I am state of pureness, and now we have to tell our stories to each other, because that's how we know each other, through the differences. So I just become the highest aspect of self that I can. And I say, come now and blend with me. This morning, I did a reading for a woman. I don't have permission to share all the details yet. Darn yeah. it. <laughs> it's, amazing, it's coming. We got to get that permission. <laughs> but I can tell you that right up, I mean, I can share this much, that right off the bat, I get pulled, my head literally pulled to the right side. I know her father's here. It's part of a system they help me with. If I get pulled to the right up here, this is a father. And I just, my shoulders went back. I sat up straight. I said, your father had this thing about posture, and he absolutely did. The reason that happened is because I asked them to merge their field of being with mine so that we become one. And then I just set aside what I know is mine and what's his stands out. Mm -hmm. It's easy then. I just report what's not me. And I can tell personality, and then they start talking. He was giving me phrases that were straight out of his mouth, and everybody else that came through in that session, phrases that my client recognized that were meaningful to her. It's this dance of source energy, yeah. spirit. Yeah. Yeah. It's magical and wondrous and evidential and healing and the greatest blessing I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. I hadn't thought about this um until this morning when I was just reviewing some stuff for this interview, because it got me really curious about what about those souls that maybe didn't have the chance to fully incarnate in this body, yes. in this in this reality. Um, I know for a fact that my mom, she lost uh, a son in pregnancy uh, about two years before I was born. So my question has always been, what about those souls? Do they become some sort of guides for their families? Sometimes. Um, Sometimes. Yeah, what happens to those souls that, that didn't get the chance to live? So again, being evidence-based medium, I always say, how can I show these people that I'm not just imagining this? But I yeah. get this sensation over where I normally feel children. I see this sparkly lights in my mind's eye, and I know this is a child that did not get to incarnate. And that could be a miscarriage or it could be an aborted child. I often just know. They don't have to say anything. I just know, oh, this was an abortion. And then they have messages for their loved one. And I always ask them, give me some evidence about that. Well, it's evidential enough to know that this child was aborted, but they, uh, they tell me what gender they would have been. Yeah. They tell me things about why they chose those particular parents. And everyone, whether aborted, whether miscarried, 
just comes through with so much love because they're part of the same soul family. And what were we talking about earlier? We all know we're souls, which ultimately then opens up even more spaciously to source itself. So, of course, they are fine and hanging mm -hmm. around with us. So, some of them, mm -hmm. yes, guiding. Every every case is unique and different. Yeah. Is there is there any possibility that we could tune into that brother that... There's um, a possibility of that if you and I were sitting quietly and not doing what I call drive-by readings, trying to do it instantly mm, and impress people. No, yes, that's a yes. sacred thing where I, you know, set the intention and we sit and do that. So I don't do mm. it on radio programs. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not a TV medium at all. Yeah, it's I it's a that. sacred thing that unfolds so beautifully, and mm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would do I that completely for respect that. We'd love to, I'd love to make that happen in, in another occasion. Thank you so much. Um, from the stories that you are able to share with people, what has been maybe a story that helped you redefine what's real in your life that completely blew the lid open for you? Oh, there are so <laughs> many. I just shared one, and I do a monthly webinar uh, to share the latest teaching and experiences, and I just told this one Tuesday night. It, it's one of my favorites. Uh, new on this path years ago mm -hmm. and my husband and I took a trip to Paris and we're both yeah. retired Navy officers and there we are walking back to our t hotel from the Louvre a long walk and we're kind of lost stop for lunch pull out our map my husband says I think we're supposed to go left and I looked at the map and we're good navigators but we returned around and I said no I'm being told we're supposed to go right so we turn right around the corner I take a few steps and stumble over something metallic on the ground I le reach down, pick it up, and it's two U.S. Navy warfare insignia pins. There okay. are at least 20 different specialty pins you can wear in the Navy. Hmm. But these were two of them. One of them at my feet on the streets of Paris was the gold surface warfare officer pin that my husband wore for 26 years. Not the exact one, but that insignia. The hmm. other one was the silver dolphins of an enlisted submariner. That's what my ex-Navy husband wore. In huh. all the world, I've been married twice. I am married now to Ty. Yeah, yeah. Those two Navy insignia end up, I stumble over them on the streets of Paris, and I just looked upward and said, what is this all about? And they said, we want you to know you are on the right path. Huh. <laughs> you can't explain. You can't, you can't make that stuff up. You can't huh. make that stuff I have up. Been sitting downstairs to this day on my dresser, I yeah. have little reminders all around me of these magical moments. Yeah, and and also your your channel is is filled with these stories. Um, the one that really gave me goosebumps is when Archangel Michael presented himself to you, and oh, that whole how, that, that whole unfolding of of that story is. I really recommend people to go deeper in that story. But you know, yeah. one thing to key in on that point is that. A lot of mediums from from what i understand is you know they'll give the information but not necessarily ask for that confirmation even for you it's so specific that you ask them within 24 hours oh yes confirm that this is real yes and that's why you call yourself a evidence-based medium evidence-based yeah. medium so i just wanted to unpack like how did you begin to um connect with that realm to give you the confirmations? How do you ask for those signs, yes. essentially? Well, it's important to understand that I didn't even know what evidential mediumship was, but I yeah. took my husband to a medium after our daughter Susan died, and she just blew our worldview to pieces. You know, you, we couldn't not believe that Susan was right there from the things she brought through, including this young girl in a brown uniform, she was a Marine, is bringing forth this little baby boy she wants to introduce to you, but he's mm -hmm. sucking his thumb shyly as if he doesn't know you. Susan was pregnant with a baby boy when she was mm -hmm. killed. So that made me dive into mediumship, and I eventually met my two mentors, Janet Nohavik and Mavis Patilla, both of whom died in the last three months. They're together across the veil, no doubt, but they both emphasize evidence-based mediumship. If anybody watches the documentary Messages of Hope on uh, YouTube or Amazon Prime, 
you'll see we recreated the moment when Janet pulled me to the front of her classroom. I was only there to write her biography, not to mm -hmm. be a student of mediumship. She convinced me I could do this because she put me on the spot and said, you can get this information too. But what had happened in the moments before that magical first reading that I ever did was that she described a system. My left brain Navy side loved the concept that if you tell the spirit worlds, I want to hear this information and this information and this and this, every time I do a reading, they will give it to you. They will cooperate with you because they're really people. They want you to know they're here and they have information to share along with their loving messages. I just thought, wouldn't that be the most amazing thing? Because that's what healed our grief, hearing that kind of information from Susan. I thought if I could do that for somebody else to bring them that awareness that death is not the end, that our love is eternal, I'm all in. And then she pulled me up there on the spot and said, what do you get? There's somebody standing here. And Emilio, I got the most stunning evidence from this guy. I couldn't see him. I couldn't feel him. I thought I was pulling data out of the air. There was a girl in the class that raised her hand and said, that's my dad, down to his nickname he gave me. Wow. So I went to England and studied with Mavis Patilla, and that's where I learned the reverence for this work, is how mm. sacred it is, how you can change people's lives and heal them in an instant, but it's also where I learned to emphasize the evidence and met my goal, I want to see you and I want to feel you. This is not data, and it's not. Yeah. So it's all yeah. unfolded beautifully. Yes. And I love how you said, I'm not a TV medium because, you know, we I've seen and, and I, you know, I think one of my biggest resistances at the beginning to getting into and exploring mediumship is because there is so much out there and not a lot of respect or reverence, as you said, for that work. Uh, and I just wanted to ask you, when you went to go study in England about mediumship, what did you discover about the history and the different uses that other cultures have used this for? And how can we use mediumship and channeling and other psychic abilities for the next stage of humanity, for what is coming for us uh, in the next coming years? What I, I don't know so much about other cultures. I could bring up a bunch now, but I didn't learn it there in England. But hmm. What I did discover is simply that the worlds interpenetrate each other. It's, heaven is not some far off place and they're right here and they're really people. They're funny. They're clever. We have real time communications, conversations. So what I discovered it is that the only thing holding us back is our story. The Suzanne story would love to just wow everybody with some amazing evidence from your unborn brother right now. Mm. And I'm not even going there. That's a slippery slope that egos go down. Yes. I know what makes this work. And it's not being put under pressure on a radio show. And I just won't mm. even go there. Mm. Yeah. And how how do you discern, let's say, a message or an intuitive just um, thought versus the ego, versus something that's coming from the ego? Ah, well, see, ego isn't always a bad thing. It's just part mm. of the story. So what you do is you notice what stands out that's not your common thoughts. So that's why I ask the spirits, give me really specific things about you that would never come into my mind. And they just jump right out. We get some generic things because some humans have many things that are in common. Their messages, many of them sound alike because you're across the veil. What do you want your loved ones to know? I am okay. I love you so much. I hear you talking to me. All of these messages from across the veil could sound like things any medium would make up, mm -hmm. but we don't when our ethics are high. And the evidence that bookends those messages are what validate this is coming from your loved one and then it's exactly what they need to hear no matter what the message is because you are really honoring those across the veil not putting words in their mouth mavis patilla she really she said she was a tough taskmaster 
I really stuck in my head in 2009 when she said, she's British, you don't want to cross the veil and have the spirits meet you and say, I never said that. (laughs) 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 Exactly. (laughs) You know, so I I bring through somebody's mother. I do not immediately say, oh, your mother's here and she'd love you so much. Because there were some mothers that didn't know how to love. And your client might say, that's not my mother. Mm. And that's the last thing I want is for my clients to say, yeah, she, well, she didn't really have my mom. So what do we do? We, we merge our field with them, capture their essence, their personality, the little things that only they and you, your client would know and the evidence. And then when moms say, I wish I had shown my love for you more, mm-hmm. then that really means something. Yeah. And even that insight goes to show that in this reality right now, as we're living, why, why do we wait? Oh. Um, before we die until, you know, a, lo- a lot of a lot of people that are coming through in your work is, is because they want to tell their loved ones, like, I'm sorry for this, or That's who- I always loved you. And how do you encourage people to do this now in this present moment? Say what you want to say. How, what, what is that process I- of opening the heart to make, oh, to make is- that truth yeah. come out? You're, thank you for allowing me to fulfill my mission because this is it. It's not my mediumship is actually the sidebar to my work. My bigger motive is to live what I call the awakened way. Way, yeah. And it's realizing you are not only human; you're part of one big web connecting everything, and that's when the synchronicity starts showing up in your life. You can't deny that, and that the creative healing force of the universe is love. You come to know this by sitting in the silence for just a few minutes a day, and please allow me later to talk about that. But please don't wait until somebody you love dies and you have these moments when you have regret. And so we simply tell everybody, don't wait. Yeah. Say it now, because you you just never know. Well, a bolt of lightning took my stepdaughter, you know? It's just, mm. we have no regrets with her, and we talk to her a lot. She's still up here, of course. You just have to get past the story. I I sign off almost every one of my emails with with love, even business ones, knowing it's going to make the person go, what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> when you realize that's what we're here to do, is to shine our light and to bring out the love in each other. It, it just changes everything. So question yeah. why you're not saying what needs to be said to your loved ones mm-hmm. now. Yeah, and yeah, on your prepared. website, yeah, on the story, hundred yeah. percent. And on your website, you see the 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 personal logo, the the symbol that you have is these angel wings. And to go off that, um, you've said that we don't sprout angel wings when we die. It is our job to grow them here. And yeah, when you've connected to, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> grow a pair, grow a pair of wings out here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but when you're when you're connecting with with these other um, souls that have passed beyond the veil, not all of them suddenly become Jesus and enlightened. Like they're still working through oh, their sure. stuff. So yeah. yeah, what what have you seen in that aspect of why these souls immediately don't you know just learn every single lesson, go through oh, their yeah. life review, and automatically are healed? Right. I can tell which who are the ones that didn't get it while they were here because during the reading they come through and they they play charades with me most of the time and I see these hands go out near the eyes opening up and that means oh my eyes have been opened, opened. over wow. here I see now what was important I never would have believed all this stuff about an afterlife mm. so you can't help but feel the love when you cross the veil and it changes you 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 have a life review where you see the effects of every one of your choices and thoughts and actions and interactions. So Mm -hmm. if we could pretend we died and are going through a life review daily, it would change the choices we make now. Mm -hmm. And you don't do it as some kind of punishment or because there's something wrong with you, only because you realize, wait a minute, I came here to be the presence of love. Yeah. Yeah. Is that is that every soul's in primary intention to be yes. incarnated here? Yes. To bring yes. that love. Yeah. Mm. To help our just I mean, if this think of this like a human experiment. How much love can we bring into this world? Can we 
bring humanity to this point where we realize we're all connected. Why I do it? For the joy of it. Mm. So how are we doing at that? You know, yeah. we have a long way to go. Yeah. And at, at this point in human history, other than this intention of bringing more love, more light into the world, is there anything that maybe your guides have told you we should be uh, really focused on cultivating more of right now? Let me ask. Yeah. Okay. And there's my little lip twitch. They do that. I can't, <laughs> I can't do it on purpose, but they do it. It's like, I saw yeah, that. Yeah. I saw that. <laughs> the, answer, uh, the answer is understanding. And that's understanding of each other from each other's viewpoint. They say that we're getting, what are they showing? Like feet in the clay, feet in the cement. We're getting stuck in our own viewpoints and we need flexibility to just dance like I do in a in a reading and merge with the other souls and say, well, why are they talking like that? What what how are they seeing the world? Not to change them, but just for greater understanding. Doesn't mm. mean you have to agree with them, but at least then they're not the enemy. They're not separate. And you could say, hmm, okay, I still don't agree with that, but I get it. And then then compassion is the result of that. And yeah. maybe a different outcome. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah, and we heard that phrase "step into someone else's shoes," but we literally um, just it came this this thought came to mind when we were having our conversation with Paul Selig, uh, a, another Chandler, and he stepped into my field and basically, how do I explain it? He became me in, yeah. in many ways, and and it oh, was yeah. like that's another level. He's like, yeah, I mean, I, I stepped into your field and and I felt what it was like to be you. I'm like, that's another <laughs> level of empathy, Paul. <laughs> This is what I learned that first time at Arthur Finley College in 2009. I was terrible at the psychic work. I could tune into people's loved ones, get evidence left and right, but I couldn't read the other people. And I thought, what's up with this? Because psychics, allegedly, all mediums are psychic. All mediums are But psychic. not all psychics are medium. A psychic is somebody mm. who can read the energy at this human bandwidth. A yeah. medium goes to the next level, those who are no longer in a body. So if you can do that, that's a higher, finer frequency, then you can tune into the level of humans here. What's wrong with me that I can't read them? And my guys came through and said, you don't read them like they're a book apart from you. You become them. So I know that I merge with the spirits so that I actually take on their gestures, their speech patterns, their word choice. So to read somebody psychically, get rid of the word reading, become them. And suddenly... You know, I want to be playing the guitar or something, you know, yeah. and, I, and, I, and I don't play the guitar. Do you? Huh. I love you know? that. I love that. And you other, play the other, guitar, Amelia? I do not. Yeah. I do not. Okay. Hmm. So you would know right away, that's not me. And yet you, you're taking up a guitar and you suddenly feel different personality aspects and you just report that because you become that person. Hmm. It's very Even cool. also the mirror neurons that we have in our brain where, you know, we're talking on a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone and immediately their gestures, the way they move their lips, the way they express themselves, we start mirroring that just off like a biological, I don't know if it's that oh, yeah. grid, that web of connection that we are all part of that helps that happen. It's energetic um, fields that energetic merge. Fields. Like you and I are matching each other in pace right now and it's a nice flow. I'm not super fast and you're slow. We we entrain our fields. Oh. Yeah. What could you speak upon uh, regarding coherence and, and how humanity can step into higher levels of coherence right now? Very, very easy. Uh, gratitude immediately coherence is when two waveforms the troughs and the peaks are aligned with each other and the amplitude is about the same scientifically that's coherence you can actually see when somebody drops into a meditative state their brain waves go from scattered monkey mind to coherent waves i had this proven when i when i put on a um, eeg yeah. eeg and went just dropped right into a coherent huh. brainwave state and so Thoughts of gratitude drop you into the heart and your heart and your mind come into coherent state and you're peaceful and calm. So before mm -hmm. we run out of time, may I please just encourage people to check out my video, Sip of the Divine. Everybody says I don't have time to meditate. I can't quiet my monkey mind. 
it asks you to give three minutes, three minutes a day to sit quietly and find that I am state beyond the story. That's where you begin. And you know, hundreds of thousands of people are, are learning this now, the sip of the divine. And you get to ask a question of higher consciousness and get an answer. So it's a fun practice. It's a training ground for immediately being able to access that peace. It yes. stands for sit in peace, sip of the divine. Sit in peace. I love that. Yeah, sit in peace. We'll link, we'll link that video. It's on YouTube, right? It is. Amazing. Yeah. Yes. Um, I knew that meditation turned your world around. I read your story. And, completely. and it's the biggest excuse people make, I don't have time for that. I get it. But you all make your lattes and your cappuccinos and your smoothies <laughs> every day. So if you can take three minutes for that, you can sit a little bit of the divine for three minutes yeah. and totally change your life. It's like how much how much uh, time do we spend on social media, on Instagram? Um, and we can allocate that to the divine, which I believe is a much greater virtual reality. Uh, I mean, we're in essentially in a virtual reality right now. And I know that that might rub people or trigger people if, if we say that. But what are your thoughts on on? this realm that we're in right now compared to this higher reality that it we is, are a part it of is as well. It is like a simulation. It is like a virtual reality. Absolutely. And if you see it that way, that gives that puts you into observer role. That's the soul is always observing all of this. So imagine yourself in another dimension watching your story play out. What choices would you make? Would you really do that move right there? I don't think so. So if if, mm -hmm. if you know that every choice you make determines the next yeah. move in this simulation, it just that gets you outside the story. But there's more truth to that than you know. That that's really what's going on. Huh. And, and and Dr. Joe Dispenza, he shared that um, very similarly in in our conversation. What he said. One of the people that attended his retreats said that when he touched the divine, he essentially was like looking at the labyrinth of life, looking in, and he suddenly understood a lot of the things and the connectedness. Because a labyrinth, everything, every path is is essentially connected. Uh, and I use that that visualization of the labyrinth to describe like we're in this game, this labyrinth. Things are connected. Are soul is here to learn certain lessons and bring now bring more love into into this world uh it's a beautiful worldview and paradigm and, and 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 reality people don't like talking to this talking about this reality as an illusion or as a game or as a simulation because it's very real to us while we're in it and of huh. course it is so in that way it is real but it is also true that we are able to view it from a different level so what does that tell us it's not the only reality yeah and we've heard a lot in the personal development space especially with like the law of attraction that we're creating with our thoughts um but i wanted to turn it over to you and talk about how are we creating with our hearts instead of our thoughts well the heart has the is the greatest radiator of the body as far as an energy field it's its energy field is the largest physically so our thought our heart is the bridge between the soul and human the head is what keeps us feeling separate so you want unity you go to the heart and that's where you can really feel our connection with each other so it's just so important to get out of the head into the heart but you still need that again that logical side of you so just find the right balance hmm. I mean, see. I haven't given up my practical side at all. Yeah. I know that you there, that there are some things that we, we absolutely, in a reality with unawakened people, need to make tough calls sometimes. Mm. But can we bring the heart into that? And as we make those tough calls, bring the compassion in. That's mm. how we move forward until we, there's no longer a need to make tough calls because people get it and we just love each other. Yeah. And our guides, our angels, they also intervene in many processes where they 
kind of pluck in or insert certain thoughts into our consciousness. How, what does that process look like? Oh my gosh. Well, it's when we, I told you we play that sign game and say, I want to sign within 24 hours and this is the sign. Uh -huh. Well, who do you think put that thought in your head? Having the bigger picture, knowing you're going to encounter that sign. We think all of our brilliant thoughts are our own and they're yeah. not. We're part of one shared mind. And when you have higher guides and loved ones across the veil who see, oh, like my stepdaughter, I said, I just love this conversation I had with you, Susan. I need to prove to your dad it's really you. What sign are you going to give me in the next 24 hours? And she showed me a flying duck. Huh? What? We were off on our boat and we pulled into Marina that night. We take the dogs to take them ashore for their thing. As we're walking from the dock to the shore, we pass the bush. The dogs startle the duck that was nesting under it. She flew out. Two feet in front of us flew right past our heads, and I scream. I mean, there's my flying duck. Now, how did my stepdaughter know to give me that sign? Bigger mm. picture. Ah, they're on the boat. I know where they're going to stay. I can see that duck under that bush because this world is not real to me. It's not solid. So this will be fun. Huh. Huh. <laughs> and and the thoughts that are just put in our mind, your guides are so close to you, and they know you so well. You think your thoughts are your own. They're not, not all of them. So they keep us out of trouble much more than we give them credit for. Yeah. And I invite people because I remember in this summer, we were with a friend in Mexico and we just started testing this out. Like we were making a lot of decisions. Should we go to this trip? Should we go there? Should we go? To... And we said, if this, if this trip or this next place that we're going to go to is aligned for our highest good, let's ask for a sign. And I remember one day very, very vividly where I asked for a sign um, to just see or feel in any way. Uh, one of my biggest uh, mentors who had passed away, Kobe Bryant, because I grew up <laughs> playing basketball. And I said, you know, I haven't, we're in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. Like there's, it's going to be very tough for me to see anything related to yeah. Kobe Bryant right now. Um, and I asked for that sign and we were having dinner with my family and for some reason, some something came up in the conversation where I wanted to show them a picture uh, on Twitter that I had from like a couple months ago or like a couple years ago too. And when I scrolled down, I was looking for that picture. I'm like, where is that? I really want to show you guys the picture right above it was the post that I made when Kobe passed away. Rest in peace, Kobe. And a picture of him of shooting course. a free throw. <laughs> and I was like, there he is. But I had no idea, no no plans to seek him out. It was just like, there's the synchronicity so, again. So just initiating the conversation that evening that led to that was put there, you see? Yes, yes. Yeah, it's How do we it, cultivate more synchronicities in our life? It Absolutely, just those three minutes a day, you're creating space in your life so that the thoughts that need to be heard are heard in your mind. Sending more love gives you that more of a sense of connection and synchronicity is another word for those are God winks. So it's the universe's way of showing you you're aligned, you're, you're, you're living your purpose of shining your light better. Huh. And then you just, once you get a few of them, start writing them down so you remember, and then you just start noticing them and they add up. Yes. And Suzanne, when, when you're talking about the awakened way, there is a part where you said, um, allow me to explain this a little bit further. I wanted to give you that space. Um, you were explaining something. That was the sip of the divine the the, so that divine. you start to know you're not only human because you, yes. you, you touch more of that. You start to realize you're part of a web because you start seeing the synchronicity and you know yourself as the creative force of the universe love. Yeah. But speaking of the awakened way, I'm so excited, Amelia. You were talking about social media and we were talking about using technology Every day for, since 2010, mm. I've been getting a daily message, channeling a message from my guides, and we call it the Daily Way Messages. Just this week, the Awakened Way app came out. Wow. And it has nearly 5,000 of those messages in there. It's updated Amazing. daily with a fresh message from this morning, every day. And there's this great button, ask for guidance now. Which of these 5,000 messages is the perfect one for me today? You push uh, the button and one comes up. And it's really cool to, to see how yes. the universe will speak to you. Lots of other goodies on there and it's free. So it's uh, 
it's out on iOS phones now. It's coming soon to Google Play Androids, but it's I love that. So grateful how the universe brought that to to being. The awake mm. just search for awakened way. Yeah, I love that. And we have tools like these. Um, for example, I use sometimes Oracle cards where it's like, I'm lost right now. I have no idea what to say to this person. I have no idea what's going to happen in, you know, in this situation. Yeah. And I'll tune in. Uh, I'll pick a card. Uh, there's, you know, the apps like yours now where we can just see like, let me receive what yeah. what message and, I need right now. Uh, and, and by doing that, you're showing you're trusting and believing there is something higher beyond the story. And the more you do that, that again will bring out more synchronicities because the uh, web loves to reveal itself to you. Yeah. If we don't believe in spirit guides and angels and, you know, this unseen realm, is it still there to assist us in this reality? Well, it's there, but you really are creating with your thoughts. So if you believe if you believe this is not real, that's what you get. Mm. You get nothing. So at least have an open mind to be open to the possibility and say, I want to believe so that you haven't just shut the door and say, this is BS. Yeah. In my world, BS stands for belief system. Ooh. So we've uh -huh. got to turn that around just with an open heart and your life will turn around. Yes, yes. I wanted to read you a quote um, as, we're, as we're hitting the hour. Um, you said that when an individual turns up the light inside and becomes aware of his or her own divinity, one more light in the Christ consciousness grid turns on. They show me their vision of a fully activated grid in the form of a sparkling stellated dodecahedron surrounding our beautiful living planet. What can you talk about this energy grid um, huh. that is lighting up right now on the planet and how can we activate it even further right now? Easy. I mean, and to me, the proof of guides is when I woke up one morning and heard stellated dodecahedron. I mean, this this <laughs> when I say it, this is not in my conscious awareness. This is coming from somewhere higher, and it turns out to be the shape of this energetic grid around our planet. And think of it like a dimmer switch. The more each one of us comes to acknowledge, I am a soul, a beautiful light. And I'm here to shine it on the world. And I'm going to do that through caring about others and stopping the turning the focus off of only me and sharing it with others. You, you've just turned up your light. And as each light brightens, that entire grid does. And it goes outwards and helps others awaken. That's how we're connected by this energetic grid of humanity. I just did two podcasts about the noosphere. N O O S P H E R E. Yes. The noosphere is this theoretical, but I know it's not theoretical, energetic sphere that's made up of human consciousness, a living, unified thing. That's the Christ consciousness grid. And as each one of us turns up our light, we help each other. Hmm. Do, does humanity have an audience right now from the unseen realms? Are they watching to see what's Everybody's happening? Everybody's watching because what we do affects the whole. Every, we are just holes within holes within holes, W-H-O-L-E. So humanity as a whole, look at the wholeness of your body, each cell and individual, but part of the whole of you. You are the part of the whole of humanity. Humanity is helping the wholeness of all that is just, just express love more so that's what the angelic realm is doing helping us be better lovers hmm. yes yes <laughs> wow this has been honestly a beautiful conversation uh, a lot of synchronicity <laughs> gosh i love spending time with you <laughs> we have to do this again for sure for sure um one of the last sort of questions before we do the we have a final trio which is rapid fire you can answer in any way that you want but this is uh an issue that i wanted to leave people off um also bring in that practicality of right now we seem to be unbalanced spiritually uh i've heard you talk about it as we're kind of prisoners of our head and wolf you know his central message was connect back to your heart 
Uh, and that's from my book, Wolf's Message. Wolf's yeah. Message, which you yes. recommended and beautiful. Like, <laughs> I don't even, like, no words. Just <laughs> I'm still processing um, the amount of synchronicities in that book. Uh, but regarding this unbalanced state from our spiritual side, how can we rebalance and reconnect with the heart in order to <laughs> bring in both the human and the soul? Just I acknowledge I am more than this story. I know I came here to be the presence of love. I affirm that I am open and ready to be that presence. That's it. And then it, it, it just flows. So it is. So it is. For the final trio, um, before we get into that, you know, I, I know a lot of people are going to be wanting to dive deeper. We're going to leave every single resource that you shared on the show uh, in the show notes on the description that people are watching on YouTube. Uh, but where would you send people to connect with you further if you have any upcoming projects that you'd like to share with people? Oh, wait, so many. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, huh. com. I always put the, the most important upcoming events just under the, the top banner and video there, the thumbnails. But down at the bottom of that homepage is a book. Um, where do I begin? Because I have so many resources. And so it's like a little menu. If this is your goal, go here. If this is your goal, go there. So that's where I would go. Yes. And you also leave a lot of gifts on your page, uh, meditations and pe things that ebooks that people can can start tuning into. And they're on um, the as well. So that's coming up. I yeah. love that. Um, for the final trio, this is an exciting part because I, each question is personalized to the guest, and I have a lot of fun doing these. Um, but the first one is that I've I've heard you say that you're on a quest for the keys to higher levels of consciousness. What is one key that you've learned throughout your journey to help people attain a higher level of consciousness? It's absolutely belief that higher consciousness exists. It's the primary one. If you don't believe, like I said, you just stay stuck. So be mm -hmm. open to that. Be open, amazing. And the second one is I wanna bring back that gesture of opening people's eyes. If there is any message you want to leave people to help wherever they're at right now open their eyes um, for the rest of their day, for the rest of you know their journey, wherever they are, they are in their path. How can what would you say to open up people's eyes even more? It's easy. Start looking for what you're grateful for, mm. because right away it brings you into coherence. So you've started kind of gotten a rut with your partner or somebody in your family, and all you're focusing on is the negative what are you grateful for? Find that gratitude and it will open you to love and the rest follows. Yeah. And and the key word there I think is, is focus because where we place our focus, our attention is where our energy goes, but we get more of uh, That's in, right. in our reality. Yeah. Uh, the last one, I call this the um, time capsule question because we have to travel a little bit into the future for this question in in the sense that if I were to give you a time capsule um, and this is a time capsule that we knew we were going to open up uh, during the time of 2030, 2050, we've had other channelers like Lee Harris, uh, his guys of disease were saying that 2030 in between 2050 is huge portal year for humanity. A lot of light is going to be coming in tomorrow. Is actually from the day we're recording, tomorrow is 11 11. So another portal to that is going to come in for humanity. But essentially, this time capsule is going to be opened by the next generation of leaders in in every space because the the young generations now at that point are gonna be stepping up into higher leadership positions in the world, whether that's government position, whether that's you know education positions, whether that's spiritual teachers. It's a new wave and I would love to know what would you put inside this time capsule for these next generation of leaders to open and be able to use these tools, use this, use this guidance uh, to create the new earth, create the golden age that has been prophesized for so many years, for centuries. Uh, it, it's funny yeah. that you use that time frame because I'm I'm one of the teachers for humanity's team. 
I don't know if you're mm-hmm. familiar with them, but you can look uh-huh. up Humanities Team online. And their major goal, they're a nonprofit, is that by 2040, we have this unity consciousness. And how they're getting there is with these master classes and classes that it's an amazing platform. If you're going to spend your time online, spend it raising your consciousness. And their treasury of tools is beyond anything that I've ever seen. So I would put in there a link to humanity's <laughs> team is what I would do. <laughs> uh, that's it. it. We have to educate ourselves. The tools I find are the three E's. Educate yourself about the greater reality because you you don't know what you don't know. So programs like yours, Emilio, and YouTube videos mm-hmm. and my resources is the educational aspect. And then the second E that's a tool that needs to go in there is experience for yourself your higher self, which you do through meditation. So the sip of the divine is one of those tools for that. And then the third E is engage higher consciousness yourself. And that is through these these asking for the signs and talking to whoever shows up in, in your sip of the divine and actually engaging across the veil. So educate, mm-hmm. engage, and experience. Yeah. Out of those three that you mentioned, I think for me the biggest one was the experience because for a long time I was reading every single spiritual book that I could get my hands on. Yep. I was listening to every spiritual teacher. I was listening to all the podcasts. And when someone would ask me something uh, about this, these topics, I would just you know say what I knew in my yes, intellect. Yes, right. Yeah, I just like, oh, yeah, of course. Like, yeah, we're souls, human living this human experience. And I would tell them about it and then all these things. Um, but then I sought out to seek more experiences that of is that. Key. And, and you without don't the get that while you're in the story. You've got to set the story aside. That's why the sip of the divine is transformational. Yeah. And after a while, you say, oh, my God, this is it. It's right yeah. here. Yeah. A lot of people seek out, this is just like a really important topic right before we close off, is that a lot of people seek out those experiences through things like psychedelics, um, through things that alter consciousness in, in other ways, maybe things that are taken from external substances. What are some experiential tools or or <laughs> experiential experiences <laughs> that you would recommend or send people to uh, that don't require maybe any external seeking. Yeah, just try my bless me method, B-L-E-S-S-M-E, and you can find it on YouTube, Seven Steps to Connecting with Higher Consciousness. That's just taking the sip of the divine a little farther, and it has an experience stage in it. That's the final E on bless me. It's an acronym. Mm-hmm. And there's deep breathing is part of that because that's one of the tools. So, you know, psychedelics absolutely work to help you. I don't know from experience, but I know from researching it that they they give people the personal experience. Oh, there's so much more that I'm not available, not aware of. But the, the slow and easy method, it's different every time. It's safe. And it's life changing over the long run. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. And and even though it's a long run, you've had quantum leaps just by <laughs> doing things like meditation oh, where you're gosh, just activating, yeah. channeling oh, now. Is there yeah. any ability that you've tapped into recently that you'd like to share? It, it just, it's always present. When I finished that reading I did this morning, I called my assistant right away and she said, oh, I'm on the way to dog sit. And I said, oh, Shih Tzu. And she said, how do you know that? I said, <laughs> The image is just right there in my head. I'm still open. I'm still open from that reading. So uh, those things are just a norm for me nowadays. And I love that. I welcome it. It's Hmm. just, it's an amazing way to live to know you're tapped in like your show. (laughs) Just tap in. Suzanne, (laughs) I just wanted to finish off by saying I honor so much your journey, you know, your service to your country and now your service to humanity. I believe that you're a pioneer in all these um, shifts in consciousness that are going on on the planet right now. And it's such a gift, such an honor to be able to connect with you. I would love to do this again. I would love to continue learning from you and encourage people to learn from you as well. Uh, Thank you so much. Go deep down the rabbit hole. It's it's a journey. It's my (laughs) joy. Blessings to you. Much love.